In this video, I'll be showing you how to play Monster Hunter 1 and G online. Thanks to modern emulation and passionate members of the Monster Hunter old school community, it is now possible to unlock all of the content from the original Monster Hunter for PlayStation 2. This includes being able to fight both Kirin and Fatalis, as well as venturing out to the unique online hub known as MindGuard. For those who are into the lore of the old world, MindGuard is definitely worth checking out, as it was cut from Monster Hunter Freedom 1 making it a PS2 exclusive feature. I'm currently working on a video essay for Monster Hunter 1, which will delve more into the finer details of the online section of the game. But for now, let me show you how to access Monster Hunter online. First things first, you'll need to configure your PCS X2 emulator to play games online. For that, you'll need the CLR Dev9 plugin, as well as the relevant BIOS file. This is all explained to you in my previous video, so go check that out if you're not up to speed yet. The next thing is to acquire a Japanese copy of the game. Either Monster Hunter 1 or Monster Hunter G will do. I recommend getting an English patched ISO of either game. For legal reasons, I can't directly show you how to get these files, but I'm sure you'll be able to find them yourself. I hear CD Romance has the good stuff, if you know what I mean. Now that we have the ISO, let's select and boot it from PCS X2. I'll be playing Monster Hunter G for the sake of this exercise. I'll also create a new character so that we can configure the online settings from scratch. When we have selected our character in the main menu, the game will prompt you to select either town or village. Select go to town. You'll get a forest themed menu screen next. Just keep selecting the top option to proceed. When you come across a screen with three options, pick the top option again. You'll notice the music stopping in the background. Keep an eye on this screen, as we will be revisiting it later. For now, select the top option. The game will now take you to a black screen with boxes highlighted in blue. On the first screen, there will be four options. Go ahead and select the top option. The next screen will prompt you to select the memory card for online play. I'm going to select the top option again. The next screen will be in grey. Press the right arrow on the D-pad. On the network adapter screen, press circle to confirm and then press right on the D-pad. On the PPPoE screen, there are two options. Select the bottom option, and then press right on the D-pad. The next screen is the IP address screen. Go ahead and press right on the D-pad. Then on the DNS service screen, select the bottom option for a manual setup, then press right again. Just press circle here to continue. As you can see, we have four boxes in a row here for us to enter our server address. The address we're using is for a private server that was created by longtime fans of the series. As of the time of this video, this address is 34, 75, 107, and 68. Our next job is to type these numbers into the four boxes. The first number is a little tricky to type in since its display box has been blocked out in the top left corner. You'll have to count the number of times you press up on the D-pad as you scroll to the number 34. Once we've typed in the first number, the other three numbers are pretty easy to type in. Again, just to be clear, the address we're typing in is 34, 75, 107, and 68. Once we've typed in the address, press circle, and it'll take you back to the DNS server address screen. Select the bottom option here, and you'll be asked to type in the address again. It's the same as last time, 34, 75, 107, and 68. After that, press circle to confirm, then write on the D-pad. Press right here to skip. This screen will ask you to double check your network settings. Press circle to confirm these settings. You'll be given an option to test the network connection. Out of the two options, select the option on the right to skip testing. You will eventually be taken back to the network settings menu shown in black and blue. To exit, simply press X, then select the left option to finish. The game will now reset itself going through the morning screens and cinematic intro. When you're back in the main menu, 
click continue and load the same character file as before. Select go to town to play online. Much like last time, keep pressing circle to go through the forest theme windows. When you reach the screen with three options, select the top option. You can select the middle option on subsequent playthroughs. On the next screen, you'll notice that a new option is available. For first timers, that option will be setting 1, but for me, it will be setting 2. Whatever the case is, just select a new option that wasn't available before. You'll come across a couple of loading screens. This next screen is the login screen to the private server called Monster Hunter Old School Server. If this is your first time, you will need to create a new account for the server. Simply scroll down to New Account and hit Circle. Next, create a new username as well as a password. It's very important that you remember both of these as they are tied to your character file. I would recommend writing backups in a notebook. And that goes the same for the server address. For the sake of this video, my username here is Beard and my password well is yours to guess. Once you're done, hit Confirm, which is in the bottom left. Select New User. Once your new login has been confirmed, you can enter the lobbies. This next white screen will ask you for your personal details for the official Capcom server. This is obsolete to us, so select the right option to skip this. On the next screen, you can register a game ID. Simply press circle to acquire the ID. Now that we're in the server, let's go ahead and find a lobby to play in. You'll notice that there are five areas to choose. Let's select the free for all room. As you can see, up to eight players can play in each lobby. So there you have it. The online hub of MindGuard is fully accessible and explorable to you now, with full credit going to the Monster Hunter Old School community. If you are interested, I would highly recommend checking out the Discord server to see more of their work. It is also a great way to connect with other players around the world who share the same passion for Monster Hunter. Links are provided in the video description below. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give a like and subscribe. I'll be posting videos once a week delving into games like Resident Evil and Monster Hunter. See you all in the next video.